Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us the legendary Ramblin' Jack Elliott over here. This is one of the all-time greats, a favorite of Bob Dylan, Thank a favorite you. of loads of people. So I was diagnosed as dead about two weeks ago by the... Uh, <laughs> the it's not uh, true, is it? No, it was the... Uh, I read about it in the paper. Yeah, <laughs> I that just goes to show you their problems. Really I'll put this on, on camera. This is the best-looking dead man we've ever seen in our lives. Well, the second best looking dead man. I think. Yeah, right. There you go. Well, the legendary Norman. Ramblin' Jack Elliott. There we go. Norman's rare guitarist. The influence, the influence of a lot of major amazing artists. I hold him responsible for the British invasion. All right. Because, Let's hear it. Hey, well, you know, Mick Jagger saw Ramblin' Jack in a train station, what, 1958? Ditched law school that day and went and bought a guitar. It was 19. There's the graph. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Looks just like the one I was playing on that railroad station. Yeah, let me grab it. He said he ran right out and bought a guitar. Uh -huh. He was about 12 years old. Oh, yeah. I was with a group of students waiting for a train to go on the other way. Uh -huh. My wife and I were waiting for a train to go back to London. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I got pretty bored sitting around waiting for a train. I got the guitar out and serenaded the kids on the platform on the other side of the, you know, tracks. Oh, that's cool. Whoa, whoa. That's from the 50s. Says, uh -huh. Can we get you to strum a couple things for... Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, wonderful. Let me see you. adjustable bridge on mine. Yeah, that was cool. cool. But it did have this that thing. Yeah, all did you, all our buddies. Did, did you meet Bob Dylan and stuff like that? Did, cause First time I, he was a huge I got back from, from Dylan. Europe. Uh -huh. uh, That's the reason Bob made it. Make That's sure you right. stay focused on what he's saying. I went to a hotel in Manhattan oh, yeah. uh, that night. I slept overnight. And it was November 61. In the morning, I went to the Port Authority bus station, took a bus out to New Jersey to visit Woody in the hospital, and there was this kid visiting Bob. He said his name was Bob Dylan, and he'd been visiting Woody for about 10 months. He just arrived in New York, hitchhiked to New York from Minnesota 10 months before. How was Woody? Was he a character or what? Well, I had been living with Woody for about four years before that. Yeah. Before I went to Europe, this is 61. I met Woody in 1951, 10 years before that. And I lived with Woody and the family in Brooklyn for 51, 2, and part of 53. 
and then we traveled together out to California in 54, and then he disappeared and hitchhiked back to New York and they put him in a hospital. And he spent the next 13 years in hospitals wow. with his terrible disease that took him out finally. Yeah. Who was that? Woody. 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 But we, uh, he was I supplied... my mentor. He was my teacher. That was he, your mentor? Yeah. But he was Woody. for like, all the original folk musicians in that whole New York thing, you know. The, uh, How did Bob Dylan hear well, about? Bob's 10 years well, younger than me. And Bob was, Bob was super influenced by both him and Woody. And Woody was like, you know, the guy before, before Bob, you if, know, if, so. If you read Bob's uh, autobiography, that uh, book he wrote called uh, Jim, make sure you get close so you hear all of this. That's one, I don't want to miss any of this. He wrote a, wrote a book called Chronicles. Uh huh. He, and, and page 250, he talks about me for three solid pages. He oh, said wow. he wanted to be a walk and talking jukebox of Woody Guthrie songs. Wow. And the guys that introduced him to Bob Dylan, uh, to Woody Guthrie's record, they said, Well, Bob, uh, have you ever heard of, uh, of Jack Elliott? No. He said, well, listen to this. And they gave him six of my English recordings that I had just been recording over in Europe at that time. And he listened to those records, and he thought, my God, he he done it. So he said, well, I'm going to have to do something else now, because Jack went ahead and did that already. So he started writing his own songs, and God bless him, I think. But Bob was imitating me for the first two years of his What did you think of his last, did you see him on the uh, the last performance he did? Uh, did? Did you ever see the movie Bound for Glory? The Woody Guthrie Yeah, I saw that. David Carradine played him? Did that, was it semi-accurate or? No, it was semi-bad, and uh, <laughs> I always wanted to play that part, and uh, Pete Seeger's and Woody Guthrie's manager, Al, Al, uh, Harold Leventhal, yeah, I actually called me in the office. And I sort of left it he out. said, now, Jack, he says, I know I told you that we were going to let you read the script, but we've got somebody else, uh, David Carradine, and he's box office. You understand, he says, patting me on the back. Had a photograph of himself with Frank Sinatra on the wall. You know? And I said, yeah, I understand, and I appreciated the a funkular kind of uh, sweet, uh, sweet, sweet old, talk, sweet old, old thank, thank you, but no could thank been, you. Yeah. Could have been just the blunt and rude, just, just New York City. What do you do? Yeah, yeah, right. But I thought, well, I appreciated him being possible? so nice and caring about it. Oh, I said, sure, yeah, I understand. And I could have gone and watched him film it. Arlo did, and uh, I didn't go. But I should saw the instruments. I actually was a friend of, I was on good terms with David for a couple of years yeah, before sure. and after. Okay, man, cool. Uh-huh. Oh, I right. knew David. Thanks, so, four games. But you know what? Jack's daughter did a really good movie about Jack. It's called The Ballad of Ramblin' Jack. It's kind of a documentary. Yeah, cool. explains all that stuff. And, um, <laughs> won a prize. It was the best documentary. When you get tired of her harping on Jack, because she says, why weren't you there? Why weren't you there? It's like she's har you know, harassing Jack in front of, you know. My cowboy friends don't like He does a soundtrack. If you get tired of her and her, just go just in and edit it and listen to his, yeah. because he, he, he also yeah, commentates through the movie. It doesn't fit the movie at all, but it's a great DVD story. with that other cool. soundtrack with me explaining my views. So you can you can take it as she made it, or you can just push button B and hear my version of it. Ah, that's great. Really to get the real story between you know. the lines. Yeah. But it was really well done. There's great <laughs> footage of him on Johnny Cash show and Woody. Yeah. There's footage of him and Woody playing, and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, some good stuff. That's yeah. cool. Well, hey, man, thank you nice so much. Nice meeting you It was nice guys. meeting you. Thank yeah, you for coming. That's an honor. And if there's anything...